Hello, this is uh, Jeffrey Fox. We're beginning uh, this next lesson, which is uh, lesson three, unit two, uh, section on sports informatics or analytics. And this is all on pitch FX. So, and this is all in the big data applications analytics course. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let's get going on the lesson. Hello, this is Jeffrey Fox again. Lesson three of unit two on sports analytics or informatics in the big data applications and analytics course in data science. <coughs> and here we're going to uh, discuss some um, various uses of pitch FX that I found in the um, on the web. Again, this is this field is like many like many other big data areas, uh, this big data is so valuable that it's very difficult to find anything but very qualitative discussions anywhere. So this is qualitative again. It's just a few places I found some information. Uh, here's some example of pitch FX. It's a it um, right-handed batters. Um, and it just records the vertical location in the strike zone versus the horizontal location here, vertical here. And the reds are called strike by the uh, umpire, and the greens are score, uh, called balls. You can see there is a little bit of screw up here, but not too bad, actually. Um, oops, there is quite, there is some, especially here and here. Uh, Indication is a bit of a problem, but um, and that quite why this one became a, uh, a strike is a bit unfair on the poor old batter. Never mind, it's not too bad. And of course, you could do this in real time and actually make um, your computer call the the strike or the uh, or, or the ball. But maybe that's not in the spirit of of a good solid. So now we come to uh, another discussion of pitch FX. We found uh, coming from Vince Gennaro again, that who had that great set of uh, discussions of clustering pitches, and he analyzes changeups. So I actually don't quite know how changeups are decided in the real world without pitch FX, uh, because the, obviously probably the pitchers usually know whether they threw a changeup or not. At least they presumably know if they try to throw a changeup. And pitch FX can try to classify with some classifier, which is machine learning, based on the record of the ball's uh, motion, uh, whether it was a change up or not. Anyway, so we, we didn't actually decide what the algorithm used by pitch FX was. It just looked to some statistics which could be used. We'll, we'll go on later on to actually not only on a bit about of a particular pitcher how you classify these pitches. That was from a different analysis I found on the web. So change ups are meant to be 40% of all pitches. They're slower by 7.6 miles per hour than the average fastball. They move a total of 12, in, almost 12 inches. <coughs> um, of which 4.4 is vertical and uh, which is about a third of the total, the rest horizontal. And here uh, on the slide, uh, next slide, which we'll go and look at, we actually have a whole bunch of pictures, and then a measure a listing of what their change ups do. And um, Justin Verlander is a picture again. I don't, it's not a. Uh, I, I'm not an expert on baseball. It turns out he show, throws a change up 34% of the time, and the good reason he does that, he actually gets a lot of movement on it. So. And he has, a, Gennaro has a formula for change up points, which is going to use in his features in classifying pictures, but he doesn't tell you that formula. And obviously, you're going to use this particular analysis to come up with the performance of batters against change ups. I mean, of course, you needn't necessarily do this. You could actually do it instead of having change up slider fastball, you could just have speed of pitch. Vertical displacement, horizontal displacement, and so on. And you needn't use these qualitative descriptions. <coughs> anyway, we're using qualitative descriptions. 
So here is this nice uh, chart from uh, Vince. Here is Justin Veranda. He's the number one in, in the most criteria for change up. He's got 109.7 points, which I told you we didn't know how to calculate. He has a total move of 15.4 inches, a vertically 8.3, 7.2 uh, miles per hour velocity difference. And he throws it 33% of the time. Or 33.6, here is Jason Vergas. Didn't get quite as many points, he actually has more movement. <coughs> he throws it somewhat less often. <coughs> Wow, too much uh, lecturing makes me cough, I apologize, and so on. So you can see how you can actually classify, and whether I say I'm not so certain you can't just use these numbers. You know, ignore these numbers, these change up points, which you don't know how to define, but we can use these things. Actually, you probably want to just use vertical movement, but we can use, here we, we've chosen total and vertical. Velocity difference and, fra and probably fraction time. So, so these are four features we could use those if we wanted to, rather than change up points. Because machine learning doesn't really care whether you have one feature or four features. It's just machine learning. It's very good at dealing with um, lots and lots of features. Remember when we did uh, deep learning for um, face recognition, they had 11 billion parameters which we determined, and certainly lots and lots of features. So I don't care about how many features we have. So uh, that's old-fashioned stuff. We need to, we just throw, we need to know the features we want. We, I don't think it matters in reducing them, because the data will, big data technology will reduce the number of features. <coughs> if we know how to write optimization problems, where if, the, if you choose a feature which the optimization doesn't depend on, it's okay, it will ignore that thing. So we know how to, we have robust optimization methods which are insensitive to over-parameterization or over-featureization. Um, okay, so here is, um, points out the WL BAM, which has this game day thing. They use a neural net to uh, classify the pitch FX. Uh, uh, pitches and they here's a fellow uh, Luke Hachevar who uh, here and here we have his fastball speed uh, plotted against innings. He obviously gets a little tired. He starts off at 92 miles per hour, ends up at more like uh, 91. And if the men on base, he's pretty a little nervous, and his fastball has a slightly uh, his men on base is red, blue is no men on base. And the red one is some lower lower performance. So these are uh, these are all. I told you some of these statistics you actually can plug into formulae. Uh, other statistics you can just tell Luke. Hi Luke, this is your fastball. Maybe you want to um, get less nervous and throw faster with men on base. I don't know. Well, maybe he wants to be more accurate. So we don't have we have to look at speed and accuracy. Or and actually, what we really want to know is. Uh, runs given up, so we um, this is not actually the right to, MPH directly is not what you want. You want to know what speed and what type of pitch with what velocity with what movement are the right ones to throw with no people on base, one person on base, and so on. You ought to be able to find this out from all this data. All right, and here is actually a pretty amusing plot. Here's Luke again and. Uh, uh, <clears throat> in a performance in September 2009. Here's some enemy plot um, speed here. And we part here a uh, horizontal deflection. And um, here we have sliders, curveballs, two seam, I don't know what a two seam fastball is, a four seam softball. And the cut fastball and change ups here. So these are a classification with some of the features. I assume that the classification depends on multiple features. And of course, this is a problem well known. You know, you can plot two dimensions, two variables on a slide. Our point is two dimensional. Uh, if you're a real person, you can visualize in three dimensions because you live in three dimensions and you can rotate and see them. And that, that would actually allow you to do pitch speed, horizontal spin, and horizontal deflection and vertical deflection. But 
can't do 10, 10 dimensions, and maybe these are all in 10 dimensions. This is the well-known challenge of high dimensional data. How do you represent them? So that's the end of this lesson, and the, the uh, we'll move on. We have one more lesson to go, and now I'm here, I'm signing off. I'm Jeffrey Fox, Big Data Application Analytics, Sports Informatics, second unit, and we're discussing Pitch FX. The last uh, few slides in the final lesson tell you about um, the other measures like uh, Hit FX and Field FX and so on. Thank you very much, signing out.